In today's fast-paced business world, organizations are constantly seeking new ways to optimize their IT strategy. Cloud computing, of course, has emerged as a powerful tool for businesses of all sizes, offering on-demand scaling, quick provisioning, and enterprise class services. However, with the ever-expanding range of cloud providers, many IT operations teams are turning to a multi-cloud approach to meet application and business requirements. While multi-cloud has clear benefits, it also presents unique challenges. For example, according to the Dell Innovation Index, management complexity and siloed experiences are among the top five roadblocks that prevent organizations from fully embracing multi-cloud environments. So before making the leap to multi-cloud, it's important to find a solution that provides greater simplicity and scalability that's required for multi-cloud success. Dell Technologies is attempting to address these challenges with its Dell Apex Navigator for multi-cloud solution. Now, according to Dell, its Apex Nav Navigator for multi-cloud provides centralized management and eases data mobility, provides operational consistency and gives strong performance while at the same time enabling organizations to achieve their business goals in a multi-cloud environment. So Apex Navigator for multi-cloud is a key strategy for Dell that they're pursuing to really try to unlock the potential of multi-cloud and of course compete more effectively in the market. And they're promising a consistent experience across clouds. Essentially, it's what I call Dell's silo buster strategy. In today's episode, we're gonna dive deeper into Dell's new multi-cloud offerings. The Cube research analyst, Rob Strecce, is gonna be joined by Allison Langan, who's the director of product marketing for Dell, along with Maggie Kapoor. She's the director of product management for multi-cloud at Dell. But first, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Shannon Champion, who was the VP of product marketing, to discuss how Dell is addressing customer needs in this evolving and ever-changing multi-cloud world. So thanks for being here. We're going to learn how to elevate your multi-cloud experience, and you can decide for yourself what Dell Apex Navigator can do for you and your business. installment of our series where we're discussing Dell's multi-cloud strategy. Our research and conversations with customers shows the disparate nature of operations across multiple clouds creates significant challenges for organizations. Securing and deploying apps, data portability, operational silos, and other barriers create impediments to implementing a cohesive multi-cloud state. The complexity brought on by multi-cloud deployments creates frustrating and unproductive experiences for IT pros. And today we're here to talk about some new innovations in Dell's Apex storage for public cloud family that help address these challenges and enable customers to achieve a more facile cross-cloud experience, something Dell refers to as multi-cloud by design. Back with me in studio is Shannon Champion, Dell's VP of Product Marketing. Shannon, good to see you again, always a pleasure. Likewise. All right. So. Shannon is what I just said, we're going to look at what's happening with customers. So what are you seeing with customers? Maybe you can start by recapping what customers are telling you with respect to their multi-cloud initiatives, maybe some of the main challenges that you see that they faced with multiple clouds. Yeah, well that was a really great intro and we're hearing a lot of the same. I think the reality is we know that we are in a multi-cloud world and the grow exponentially growing data and the dispersed nature of that uh, we know 92% of companies really identify as multi-cloud, meaning they're in two or more public clouds and they're also investing in private cloud infrastructure. 
And in talking with customers, we're seeing a consistent set of challenges sort of emerge, which is like keeping them from really innovating with multi-cloud. And you hit on many of them, but but one that kind of rises to the top is the unpredictable costs. I, we hear from customers that say, you know, it's really hard to forecast my budget requirements and plan when I'm faced with these sporadic unplanned cloud costs. One, a big one that you hit on is management complexity. So customers are really grappling with like how to get control of their management when you have data spread across so many locations on-prem and in the public cloud. And we're also hearing from them that the cloud inconsistencies are really creating some challenges for them because it, each different public cloud has different security models. They offer different enterprise class storage software, feature sets and capabilities. And all of that really exacerbates this skills gap that customers are, are telling us they're still dealing with, right? Like how do I make sure that my IT staff has the right skill sets and familiarity with the tools in the public clouds that we want to be in. Uh, and the last thing I would say that we hear quite a bit is this concept of limited visibility. Customers are just really struggling with getting a holistic view of everywhere their data lives, which is kind of scary uh, and you know leads to security and compliance challenges. Yeah, I mean, the initial allure of, hey, not to pay CapEx, great, but then at scale, you know, the percentage that, <laughs> It fluctuates, you know, creates problems. So what are you doing to help customers with these challenges? Well, that's where Dell Apex comes in. So mm -hmm. Apex was created to deliver multi-cloud by design, a seamless modern cloud and consumption experiences in all locations that bring simplicity, agility, and control. And when you think about the Apex strategy, there's really three main elements, right? The first is how do we help our customers go from ground to cloud? And we're doing that by bringing our leading enterprise class storage software across block, file, and data protection to the leading public cloud providers. And we call that Apex Storage for Public Cloud. The second part is how we take those cloud ecosystems that our customers are choosing and bring them on-prem with consistency and control. And we're doing that across the common cloud stacks on-prem with our new turnkey Apex Cloud platforms. And then the third leg of the stool, if you will, is how we're simplifying those multi-cloud experiences for our customers in a broad set of dedicated IT landscapes across the board with subscription and as a service offers. And when you look at that from a storage perspective, all of this together really creates that universal storage layer, this common set of software defined storage services everywhere. Yeah, so we've been kind of waiting for this day for a while. <laughs> And, and so really appreciate that. And we're here to really dig into some of the specific announcements related to what Dell calls this, what Shannon just talked about ground to cloud strategy. We want to know more. I mean, can you maybe provide a little bit more detail, Apex storage for public cloud, the family, the offering, and really, I'm really interested in how Dell differentiates from all the other noise that's out there. Yeah. So the ground to cloud is delivered through the Apex storage for public cloud family, as you mentioned. So the family really consists of two parts. You have your storage endpoints in the public cloud combined with consistent and centralized management, right? So it's a comprehensive set of storage uh, services across block, file, and data protection, which does set us apart in the, the comprehensive nature of the broad set of storage supported in the public cloud, um, all of this creates uh, part of that universal storage layer, which is so important. And then we give customers control, visibility, and management of that universal storage layer via this SaaS control plane that gives them operational consistency from on-prem to public cloud. It gives them extreme performance and scalability so that they can confidently run those mission critical applications and workloads in the cloud that they might not have been able to do before. And all of that comes with improved TCO. We're seeing some major cost savings um, with these offers. And part of that includes, you know, being able to optimize your costs by leveraging pre-committed cloud spend or Dell TLAs. Okay, so, and that's the other thing. I mentioned CapEx up front. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's alluring, but then you get all these other hidden costs and that's what you're trying to address. But what specific cloud storage offerings are, are included? Yeah, so it's block, file, and protection storage. So let me just kind of unpack each of them. 
I'll start with Dell Apex Protection Storage because that's where Dell started with this game, right? Bringing our enterprise software to the public clouds. And today we are protecting over 18 exabytes of data in the public cloud and over 1800 customers are, are you know, really trusting Dell with their data and protecting that in the public cloud. Um, also, Dell Apex block storage is really a game changer. This is a highly disruptive technology, and we're really excited um, to see how it transforms our customers' environments. It's the most scalable cloud block storage, also the most resilient and flexible cloud storage offering. It can offer over 100 times better performance and 87% cost savings versus the native public cloud block storage services. I think what people oftentimes don't appreciate is, you know, the cloud storage is, is pretty basic, right? When S3 came out, it was like, hey, nice, nice cheap and deep object storage, but companies like yours have had deep, deep stacks for years, experience on recovery, on, you know, whether it's the space efficiency of snapshots and the, the entire, the security pieces of it. So the, the, the capabilities that you're bringing to the cloud are just, they're more mature and, and they're more substan substantive from a feature standpoint. Earlier you talked about the universal storage layer. So can you elaborate on that and give us sort of a double click on really what's in there? Yeah, for sure. So earlier I talked about the Dell Apex multi-cloud strategy and the universal storage layer is really how we deliver multi-cloud by design. So to have true multi-cloud capabilities, you need to start with the same storage architecture deployed everywhere, and that is universal. <laughs> so that's where that word comes from. Uh, and that universal storage needs to be modern, it needs to be software defined, it needs to support VMs and containers, and it needs to be architected with standardized open APIs to support that management, automation, and flexibility. But it's not enough just to have that universal storage everywhere, you also need a consistent cloud ecosystem, right? You need to have the same runtime application environments in the public cloud as you do on-prem. So it's really taking that concept of common software-defined storage services combined with that consistent and common cloud ecosystem environment together that we call the universal storage layer. Got it, okay, and then it sounds like Apex Navigator is like a linchpin of your multi-cloud strategy. What specifically is that all about? What's the offering there? So how do you take the universal storage layer and bring the management control and visibility to it? That's exactly what we're doing with Dell Apex Navigator. It's a SaaS control plane that delivers intelligent, automated management uh, that really orchestrates the seamless workload mobility and improve service levels for our multi-cloud assets. Okay, so what you're building here is this, you're, you're hiding all the complexity of the underlying clouds, you're making a consistent experience across those clouds, including on-prem. Um, like I said, this is a day we've been looking forward to for a number of years. We're hearing this more and more from customers that it's problematic, the hidden cost, different skills required. Really appreciate your time here. Any final thoughts you want to leave the audience with? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of good reasons that customers are choosing multi-cloud. Some of them are looking for the best tool for the job and the various public clouds that are offered. Some of them have, you know, stringent regulatory guidance that uh, around where their data can be for certain times, period, periods of time. And some are just looking for more options and flexibility. So regardless of what the reason is, we know multi-cloud is here and with Apex Storage for Public Cloud, including the introduction of Apex Navigator, we're really helping elevate our customers' multi-cloud experience and delivering improved TCO. I talked about some of those really compelling numbers. We are bringing them centralized and intuitive management, seamless data mobility, which we're hearing is really important to our customers, operational consistency across on-prem and the public cloud, and then that unparalleled performance that I talked about. So solving, hopefully, many of those challenges that you set us up with here. Um, the one exciting thing that I did want to announce is that we are really excited to get our customers trying out this technology, and so we're offering a no-cost, risk-free 90-day evaluation, so there's really no reason that they shouldn't go try it. Yeah, nice freebie, check that out. And uh, you know, as, as a great example, as Matt Baker from Dell likes to say, it's not a zero sum game. 
the meaning the cloud is you're building on top of all this wonderful CapEx that the cloud players have built. You're adding value on top of it. And that's just a win-win, uh, particularly for customers. Thank you, Shannon, really appreciate your time. All right, stick around to hear from Maggie Kapoor, who's the Director of Pro Product Management, and Allison Langan, who directs Product Marketing from Dell Technologies. They're going to dive deeper into these offerings with our Rob Strecce, but first, take a look at this cool video. Welcome back to Elevate Your Multi-Cloud Experience with Dell Technologies on theCUBE. I'm Rob Strecce, Managing Analyst with theCUBE Research. We just heard from my colleague Dave Vellante and Shannon Champion from Dell on an overview of Apex Storage for Public Cloud. Today we're going to talk about a new standard in multi-cloud management and operations from Dell. Let me welcome to theCUBE Maggie Kapoor, Director of Product Management for Multi-Cloud, and Allison Langan, Director of Product Marketing from Dell Technologies. Welcome both. Thanks for Thanks having for us having here. Well, thank you for being here. I think this is a lot of fun. I think multi-cloud is really the standard. I think cloud operating models are really where it's at. And I think it's more than just a place. It's how you actually go and build it out and operate it. So I think this is a really timely discussion that we're going to have here. So let's kind of, really jump into the announcements. Uh, Allison, can you share with us what was announced? Sure, so essentially um, we are delivering, continuing to, to deliver on the promise we made at Dell Technologies World earlier this year of delivering seamless uh, management and data mobility between on-premises and public cloud uh, and continuing to extend our best-in-class storage software into the public cloud. And with that, today I'm excited to share that our first set of management and operations capabilities within the Dell Apex Navigator family are going to be generally available with the announcement of Dell Apex Navigator for multi-cloud. And with this offer, it's essentially going to deliver improved TCO, centralized management, seamless data mobility, operational consistency between on-prem and your public cloud environments, and unparalleled performance. Uh, today specifically, what is a, what we're announcing availability of is our Dell Apex block storage for AWS that will support Navigator. And we are also going to be um, delivering our day, Dell Apex file storage for AWS early next year. No, this is, I, I think, super exciting stuff. And I, I think, again, it's really timely in where you can go with this and how you can get cost savings. Because I think everybody's looked at it and been stunned with their bill that they get at the end of the month from one of the big hyperscalers. So Maggie, why don't you really kind of drill down a little bit further into some of the compelling features that are being announced in the product? Sure. Yeah, so you know, our goal when we started to engineer and architect our product, we wanted to simply bring a centralized management uh, tool set for our storage customers um, that is not just centralized, but also provides a very secure environment for, for our customers, right? 
So really the, the key characteristics of the, uh, the top things that we're bringing to market with this first release, as Allison said, it's block storage on AWS, and it revolves around five things. Uh, first and foremost, security. I just mentioned that, and I'm going to keep mentioning that because- You have to. <laughs> right, it, it is so important, right? And uh, so we bring in that uh, zero trust framework as we started to architect the product, and really how do we deliver a secure way of uh, operating in a multi-cloud environment? The second being deployment. As we're bringing our storage endpoints to the cloud, how do we easily automate the deployment process, not just of our storage endpoint, but also the underlying public cloud infrastructure. And then the third piece as we move on is the management aspect of it. How do you manage uh, you know, securely, but also do lifecycle management on your endpoints uh, across the board? Uh, and so doing that as a SaaS portal uh, is, is what we're bringing. Um, moving on after management, it's all about monitoring. So how do you monitor uh, you know, your endpoints once they are deployed in the public cloud? But I do want to call out that it's not just monitoring of your cloud endpoints, but also bringing in that on-prem aspect of it. And finally, uh, the fifth uh, tenant, which is data mobility, which we are super excited to bring to, to our customers, which is the seamless ability to move data, move workload uh, between on-prem and the public clouds, depending on you know, whether your business needs change or uh, upgrade or your workloads change, right? Um, so those are the key, key things that we're bringing to market. Yeah, I, I think it's huge to bring that together. Again, multi-cloud is, I, I think, the standard. I, we have some research that says it's kind of hit an equilibrium between hyperscalers, meaning in cloud and on-prem, and they're really, I, I think this is critical for people to be able to, and especially that last point about the data mobility, and we'll kind of dig in on that uh, in a little bit, but Allison, what are some of the outcomes that customers can expect you know, with this and from these updates? Right. So with Apex Navigator for multi-cloud, we're essentially empowering our customers uh, to be able to un unlock a new standard of excellence with multi-cloud management and operations. Um, through this uh, centralized SaaS-based intuitive experience, customers are going to be able to get up and running quickly through the self-service Apex console or through APIs. Uh, they're going to be able to optimize workload placement more easily with purposeful data and application mobility. Um, you know, Maggie touched on security. You're going to be able to reduce risk with secure operations and zero trust adoption. And you're going to be able to do all of this from that single centralized user interface. And so all of this value just builds upon the value of our storage endpoints in the cloud as well, which are essentially bringing enterprise class storage capabilities into a public cloud environment. So things like thin provisioning, data reduction, uh, encryption, uh, you name it. These are you know, enabling customers to power even the most demanding and mission critical workloads in the public cloud that they weren't necessarily able to do before. Yeah, and I think that's part of the key is really about how do you bring these workloads up there because there's still a lot of applications that are on-prem that people want to burst up or maybe modernize as they go along, but the data has weight, it has gravity, so being able to do that. Let's dive a little deeper because I think, you know, it, it is what it is this year and cost optimization is a big thing. So what are, what are type of cost optimizations can and cost savings can organizations expect? So this is a huge value prop for these offerings. We actually um, completed a recent study where we benchmarked our Apex block storage uh, for public cloud offering with Navigator against uh, native public cloud storage just on its own and to see what the TCO is going to look like. And I'm telling you, the, the results were astounding. Like, <laughs> you're not even going to believe these numbers, but essentially, through this study, our Dell solution was able to deliver up to 87% cost savings compared to just a sta standalone native uh, public cloud storage offering. So, you know, what we're allowing to, to do here, and this, this highlights what's possible with these offers and what, you know, 
thinking big of what customers can actually realize here is when you pair our offerings with their pub preferred public cloud provider, we're just elevating that overall public cloud experience for them. Yeah, and I, I think that's the key is that customers are looking to understand how does that impact themselves? So do you have a customer example that you could share with us around that, that really how they saw or how they could see Apex storage for public cloud really help them bring in those savings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously this study is showing huge, huge numbers, really big savings and you know, even though this is a new family of offerings, we're already seeing real world examples of customers of, you know, what they can realize in specific scenarios. So, for example, um, a large financial in institution re recently completed a four month proof of concept with our Apex block storage uh, for public cloud offering. And the results were incredibly compelling. Um, it really checks the box from technical, operational, as well as financial. From a technical standpoint, they were able to see a 44% peak latency reduction, a 46% improvement in their data transfer speeds, 29% better data reduction. From an operational standpoint, um, they were able to create a universal storage layer. This concept that um, Shannon talked about more in the, in the previous segment where creating that consistent common storage between their on-premises and um, public cloud footprint they were able to deliver this consistent experience, which creates, you know, operational simplicity as well as, um, you know, not having to learn new skill sets. So their IT admins are able to leverage like knowledge they already have, and it really also helps with them, um, you know, streamlining like maintenance costs and things like that. So um, finally, we're talking TCO. So <laughs> financial, that's the big one you're waiting for. Uh, they were able to see four. $15 million worth of savings over a five-year TCO and are going to be cash flow positive by year two. That's that's insane. Because <laughs> I, I think <laughs> when you start to look at it, I mean, a two-year payback is just un un unheard of, especially mm -hmm. with this. And I mean, most people are still trying to get their uh, applications up and running in the cloud at that point in time. But we'd be remiss if we didn't dive in a little bit deeper on the security aspect of it, security and everything security is top of mind and organizations, particularly in cloud and public cloud for that matter, are super hyper aware of what's going on with their security and really picking it apart. So Maggie, could you help us understand how does Apex Navigator really help customers with that? Absolutely, and you're so right, Rob, right? It's not just uh, cloud, public cloud, but multiple public clouds, right? So it's so important to kind of uh, make sure that that we build that confidence in our customers. So as we were building the product, uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, when we we're building, there were two things that were absolutely important for us from a product standpoint. One was to keep security front and center. And second, making sure that we're not just bringing the product from a UX perspective to our end customers, but also have an API first uh, approach to it, right? So as we were building the, the security tenants, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we give our end customers full control, but also confidence in the ability to use a SaaS portal, especially because we know they're, they're looking to manage their storage assets and to, you know, data management capabilities using a SaaS portal. So keeping that, um, you know, uh, data and security in mind was, was extremely critical to us. Um, the way we did, if you break it down into the zero trust framework, you can see that how do you bring that? Uh, and the reality is to really give the end customers the full control over uh, the operations that they are trying to do, right? So uh, controls not just over the, the users, the roles, the permissions, the uh, groups, certificates, and the keys, bringing it all um, in the hands of users was very important. So if, if you are uh, an IT ops user who are starting, who's starting to use the multi-cloud navigator for, um, uh, for your organization, you can then decide which users need to be added to uh, from your organization and what 
roles do they need to have when they are added to this, right? So really bringing, uh, bringing that notion along with also how those companies and organizations can bring their own uh, identity and access management and federate that with Dell's identity, right? Which is so important. And I, I think this was one of the hardest things for us as we were bringing the product uh, to life because you know, you're know you looking at the functionality that I'm talking about. Doing that functionality may be um, you know, simple enough or it might sound like, but doing it with that security centric uh, thing in mind is extremely important to us. Yeah, I like to say yet not another SSO, not another single sign on that I have to go and configure. It's federated in, which is I think key when you start to look at it. It probably also helps them from a perspective of getting it yeah, you know, adopted inside that organization because they don't have to go and standardize on something else. Exactly. You're absolutely right. And then, you know, when we talk about operations like data mobility, for instance, once they're in there, you're not asking users to re-enter your credentials, you know, every single time. You want to probably automate those things using APIs and, you know, plugging it in with, um, you know, automation tools like Ansible or Terraform. And, um, you know, the users can just run those scripts for data mobility, for instance. And if it is federated, um, you know, it's it just, you know, signs on and kind of moves forward. So. Yeah, I, and I think that's a great, because, I mean, I think the integration with those, the Terraforms or open tofu or whatever comes next uh, in there and Ansible and stuff like that is really, I think, key because I think that, you know, uh, infrastructure as code integration is huge for anything that's going to be in public cloud or have a cloud operating model. Um, and with that, kind of let's take it down a level and kind of look at uh, kind of the workflows such as deployment management and monitoring and kind of give us a flavor for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is, uh, it, it's so exciting, you know, on, on things that we're doing. So let's talk about uh, deployment. Uh, our deployment, we're, we're extremely proud to kind of bring this. Um, it's a very complex task of not just deploying enterprise storage in the public cloud. So you're not just deploying your storage, but also the provisioning, the underlining public cloud infrastructure that goes along with it. So our deployment is really a four-step, pretty uh, easy four-step process. Uh, you know, you log into your uh, Apex console, uh, you find your way into the navigator place. Once you're there, you pick your storage type. Uh, today we're talking about block storage, but as Allison mentioned, file is coming pretty quick. So you pick your storage, you pick your cloud um, of your choice. Uh, in our first release, it's AWS. Then you go about picking your region, entering your public cloud credentials into the system. And then you get into a place where you get to pick the options. What kind of storage uh, offering do you, are you looking for a balanced uh, profile or a performance optimized uh, profile? add in the capacity that uh, you'd like to do. And then the other excellent part about our product is that uh, we give an option to do not just single uh, availability zone, but also multiple availability zones. So you get to uh, customize your uh, storage endpoint that you want to deploy in the cloud. Once you select those things, you basically hit deploy, you know, and it's really as simple as that to kind of just do that, and then we take care of all the magic behind the scenes of, you know, provisioning the public cloud infrastructure and deploying our software um, in in the cloud. So that's a, about deployment. Uh, moving on to once it's deployed, you are in, you know, you're ready to kind of manage and monitor your uh, your environment. And we talked about single sign-on capabilities. So once you have deployed and up and running. We actually have the ability to continue to manage your ex using your existing storage management tools, and you have single sign-on into that capability. So, you know, we're not replacing our existing element managers. If our storage uh, admins, IT ops uh, uh, folks are used to the tool sets that have been available, we just make them available in a much more integrated and easy manner for them to kind of go in and do their day-to-day -day activities. 
And then for monitoring, uh, we have our tool Cloud IQ. So it's really powered by the same capabilities of Cloud IQ, but extending it to monitor the license inventory, uh, the health, performance, capacity of your storage endpoints, not just of your cloud endpoints, but also your on-prem systems that you may have in your environment uh, from before, for instance, right? So you go about doing your day, day two activities of managing um, as well as monitoring of your assets. Yeah, so you see the full estate, which is, I think, critical uh, in being able to understand, you know, where should applications live? Where does the data need to be? And I, I think that, to me, and I, I said I'd circle back around on this because, to me, it's, it's one of the biggest pieces to the puzzle for, you know, really enabling true cloud operations is really data mobility. And I, I think what your core value prop that you're providing is, hey, it's all the same and it talks to each other and you have that data mobility. So why don't we kind of, you know, go another level down and kind of help us understand what's enabling that. Yeah, so, you know, one of when, as we talk with our customers, we hear that, when they're moving into the public clouds, um, you know, th there are two sets of, some are um, figuring out which workloads need to move to the public cloud, and others are, you know, they all started in the public cloud and probably are realizing that not all workloads belong in there, right? And then now you deal with the egress um, charges of bringing workloads down, but one of the things, pain points that we hear is, how do you do that in a more seamless manner? And, and Shannon talked about our universal storage layer, which is so important in bringing a capability like data mobility that we're talking about, right? So it's really using the native replication technology that our products have, leveraging that to have the ability to move your workloads, because we do know that you know, uh, there can be a shift in business strategy, for instance, you know, oh, we need to move certain workloads to the cloud, or there might be that certain workloads don't belong in the public clouds and you probably need to bring it back to uh, to the on-prem world. And so it's really driven um, uh, on on those uh, key, key uh, pain points of our customers that we're bringing to market. Yeah, I mean, even I, I think some of them, you know, could have been, like you said, not architect had just lifted and shifted to the cloud because somebody said, this is where a cloud first strategy, just put it up there and then, hey, you know what, we're going to actually bring it back down, re-engineer it properly, but you still need to move the data, which is, I think, one of the biggest pain points that when I talk to organizations that they have is really, how do I do this in a way that my people can understand it in the tooling that they can understand it as well. So why don't we also kind of delve in a little bit, Allison, with some of the use cases that mm -hmm. you're seeing from customers and really looking uh, what they're trying to uh, do to implement this type of solution. Right, so there's really, um, I would say four high level strategic use cases that we are, we're seeing customers implement with this, with this family of offerings are um, Apex storage for public cloud. So that's the combination of our endpoints across file block data protection, as well as our management capabilities with Navigator. And so the first of those would be extending existing on-premises infrastructure to the public cloud. So taking your on-prem fo footprint and being able to use that same, you know, consistent operating model and extend it into the public cloud um, where it makes sense. Uh, we have an example of um, a customer who was an existing, an existing PowerFlex customer who had a, a significant on-premises um, data footprint, or storage footprint. And we're looking to move some of that out to the public cloud. And we were able to do that with our Apex Block Storage for Public Cloud offering, um, being able to you know, streamline and make it really easy for them to implement you know, a disaster recovery option in the public cloud and you know free up some of that space on prem and enable a true hybrid model um, as Maggie mentioned you know it's not it's not an either or there's some workloads that make sense on prem and some in the public cloud and creating that hybrid model with the common storage um, you know is a is a nice seamless way to to make that real um, the second one uh, 
is being able to run mission critical workloads in the cloud. So that's something that historically has been a challenge for some enterprises is you know, really getting the, the performance, um, the latency um, that they need and just the lack of enterprise storage capabilities essentially in the cloud to, to, demand, to power those demanding workloads. Um, with our storage in the public cloud, they can do that. You know, I've touched on this earlier, but you know, the unparalleled performance, our block storage offering, for example, delivers a hundred times, up to a hundred times the performance of native um, uh, block storage from the public cloud providers by itself. So again, elevating that experience by you know, adding our storage on there. Um, so then, you know, for example, we have a customer healthcare company who, when they saw these performance characteristics, you know, they were able to be confident in moving some of their cl clinical apps and database into the public cloud and, and know that they can run that. Uh, so that's an important one. And then the third is being able to integrate with uh, public cloud services. So obviously one of the, you know, benefits or why customers like the public cloud of, of many reasons is the plethora of uh, data services and application services available. And, you know, we are able to make it, make it easier for customers to get their data into the cloud to leverage those and, and marry them. So um, that's the third. And then finally, it all comes back to optimizing costs. So I already talked a lot about the TCO, um, you know, again, I don't mind saying those numbers again, I love them, up to 87% cost savings um, they, can, they can realize um, from a TCO perspective. But it's not just that, it's also you know, ways to optimize their costs. So if customers have pre-committed cloud spend with their preferred public cloud provider, or they have um, an existing, their existing Dell customer who has a Dell TLA, you know, they can apply um, they can apply those credits to these offers and, and help spend down that pre-committed cloud spend. So there's also there's streamlining and optimization from that from that standpoint as well. Yeah, I mean AWS customers are always looking how do they you know optimize their EDP and it's the same in Azure with those programs as well. Uh, knowing those programs very well, I think it's a mm -hmm. it, it's very I think critical for people to be able to understand how to optimize their cloud bill because mm -hmm. I mean again exactly. staying in that cloud operating model have the same tooling same navigation same monitoring and management and optimization I, I think that's really key to them uh, so what about you know what's next what's why don't we start with you what's uh, next on your to-do list here um, well you know really excited about today's announcement but this is really just the first step right um, we're going to you know we have block um, on AWS supported with Navigator today. Um, as I mentioned, file coming early next year. And we're just gonna continue to expand from there to more, um, you know, supporting more endpoints, more public clouds, we're just gonna continue to grow our ecosystem and as well as new flavors um, of our management capabilities. So for example, you know, today we're, we're talking about our Navigator for multi-cloud but coming on, a, on the heels of that, which we also talked about at Dell Tech World last year, will be our navigator for Kubernetes. Um, so essentially, um, that's going to be the next next flavor we're looking at there. Absolutely. But from your point, I mean, what what do you have on the roadmap there that that's coming next? What are you what are you excited about? So there's there's a ton. Yeah. <laughs> I, I talked to my engineering team saying there's no limit to our backlog. <laughs> but in it, you know, in terms of what capabilities we're going to build, the capabilities, you know, expand those five that I talked about and add uh, more capabilities to um, the the functionality itself, but. You know, what I would really like to call out is that everything that we talked about, the Navigator plus the Apex block storage is available today and, and users can go in and try it because we are bringing a, a free 90-day trial with all of our products. We want to know, we know this is new, right? And we do want to build that confidence with our customers. So the ability to go and try it out before having to really commit and buying the product is is important. So you know, my, my thing would be go check out what we're building. We're super excited about it to bring to market. And uh, we think it's going to be a game changer. Yeah. And to that effect, I think, you know, for th where they should go next, we'll put a link to that right in the description here so that they can go and find it very easily and, you know, don't have to go searching around. It'll be right there in the, in the description. So 
I, I want to thank you both uh, for coming on board today. You know, welcome to the Cube and being on here. It, it's been fun. I mean, I know how huge this is, and having been at a hyperscaler myself, that getting that layer stack right and making it look the same for multi cloud is huge. Uh, it's 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 a lot of effort. So thank you for coming on board. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you all for watching this episode of Apex Storage for Public Cloud on the Cube the leader in high-tech enterprise analysis and coverage. Thanks very much.